Alright, in this video I want to talk about the Cartesian coordinate system and just kind of talk about a few basic things, a couple quick questions here. So, um, again, without totally introducing it, so forget the stuff in the corner for a second. Um, we always make a horizontal line. We typically label that generically as our x-axis. This is what's known as our independent variable. More on that later. Um, the line up and down is what's known as the y-axis and that will denote the what's called the dependent variable. Um, the way I think about it is, so the idea is any point in the plane um, and any point you know on this piece of paper can be described uniquely using what we call coordinates. So the way we write a coordinate is we put it in parentheses. Uh, forget about my little squiggle there. The first number um, represents the x-coordinate and to me what that does it tells me how far I go left or right from the point that we call the origin. That's the point right at the intersection of the x and y um, axis. The points, the coordinates of the origin, we label those as 0, comma, 0. The second coordinate, which is the y-coordinate, tells me how far I move up or down from this point. So it's kind of like a reference point. So that makes sense this should be 0, 0, because we don't move anywhere left or right. We don't go anywhere up or down. So this point right at the intersection would be the point 0, 0. OK, so let's address a few questions here. Part A, it says, what are the coordinates of these, uh, these three points, A, B, and C? Well, to get the coordinates of A, let's see, from the origin, I'm moving positive 1, positive 2, positive 3 units to the right. That's the value of the x-coordinate. And then from there, it looks like I move one unit upwards to get to that point. So point A has coordinates 3, 1. Uh, point B, okay, so notice point B is back here. To me, we have to go to the left, so negative 1, negative 2, that's going to be the x coordinate. And then I have to go from that guy, I go up 1, 2, 3 points, positive 3, so the coordinates of B will be uh, negative 2, positive 3. The point C here, okay, so let's see, point C is down in the, the bottom right corner. So we move one unit to the right, and then we move down one, two, three units, so we're down at the Y value of negative 3. And now I have the coordinates of every point. Um, let's see, let's do a couple other questions. Uh, point B, they say to which quadrant does each point belong to? So this is just kind of terminology. Uh, we don't say the top right corner, top left, uh, bottom left, bottom right, really. What we do is any number that falls in the top right corner, we say that falls in quadrant 1. So point A belongs to quadrant 1. Any point that falls in the top left, we say that belongs to quadrant 2. So point B belongs to quadrant 2. The bottom right is quadrant 3, excuse me, the bottom left is quadrant 3, the bottom right is quadrant 4. So point C, so A belongs to quadrant 1, B belongs to quadrant 2. We don't have, uh, you know, none of our three points that we have listed belong to quadrant 3, uh, but C belongs to quadrant 4. If it falls on the x or y axis, we say that. We don't, you know, you could, sometimes I've seen people say, you know, it falls in between quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 on the x axis, for example, if you took some point. So just to clarify that as well. Okay, um, so part C here, one more question. It says, what are the coordinates of a point in quadrant 3 that's five units away from each of the, um, from each axis? Well, okay, so we want it to be, so quadrant 3, it's got to be in the bottom left corner. Since it's going to be five units away, um, you know, to be five units away from the x-axis, I would have to go down, uh, I would have to go five units down, you know, somewhere five units down. So let me draw another picture here real quick, just because this one's a little cluttered. So if this is the x-axis, um, this is the y-axis, if we have to be in quadrant three, if we're going to be five units down, well, five units down, you know, I could be a couple different places. I could be really anywhere along this line. You know, anywhere along this line, I would be five units down. Since we were below the origin, this would be the y coordinate of negative five. Likewise, if you think about it, um, to be in quadrant three, 
you know, so, so there's a lot of ways we could be five units away from the y-axis. You know, we could just go five units to the left. But again, we need to be in quadrant three. So to be five units to the left, um, I would have to be somewhere kind of along this, this vertical line. So the basic idea is to be five units away from the x-axis. This picture's a little cluttered here. Uh, so the only way to be in quadrant three and to be five units um, below would to be at the y-coordinate of negative five. And the only way to be in quadrant three but to be five units away from the y-axis would to be at the x-coordinate of negative five. So a point that's uh, five units away from both the x and y-axis in quadrant three, we could say that's the point negative five comma negative five.